Thank you so much again, Hannah, uh, for doing that. Fantastic. Um, if you would like to do something similar, then please do grab me at the end. Um, you'd be very welcome to. Padre, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done, Hannah. That's that's very helpful. Good news. Um, I want to talk tonight about a verse that I think is um, just incredibly important. And um, when I was, I don't know, 17 or 18, um, someone broke the mould completely with the songs that we were singing in church. I, I don't know if you can imagine... Um, uh, the, the, the worship songs that we used were, were hymns, mainly written in the 17th century, and they were a book of choruses called um, uh, CSSM choruses that, that were a very odd set of uh, songs that um, children did, sort of by Blue Galilee. If you want to know any of them, ask Maggie, because she's, she's a genius at all of these songs. And, um, and, then, and then a song came along that changed the way that we worship. And it was a very simple song, and uh, it was simple. I'm not going to sing it because I, I can't do it. But it, it was, it was. No, because this is going live stream. There's no way. No, it, it was seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that changed the way that we worship because suddenly we were singing scripture. And we were singing songs and a load of people wrote another load of songs and, uh, and then the whole worship movement took off and that was one of the key songs of the hippie uh, revival, the Jesus people and uh, seek first the kingdom of God. About a decade later, John Wimber comes to England and talks about a way of being church that radically changed what we do and uh, and he talked about seeing God's action on the earth in terms of his kingdom and and so we were suddenly we were we were praying your kingdom come we were doing acts of the kingdom we were we were speaking uh, the kingdom we were uh, worshiping and and praising and prophesying and and acting for justice because of the kingdom and and it just incredibly important and then uh, another decade later i started getting into my favorite theologian and and he started talking about kingdom warfare and justifying the whole of Scripture on an understanding of the battle between uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of, of the evil one and seeing the, the cross worked out in that way. And then about a decade later, we had uh, things like um, uh, the, the oh, what's the name in um, Mozambique? Um, yeah, Heidi Baker with a radical demonstration of the kingdom power and a call to adventure and a call to kingdom adventure. And, and I think that's a, a phrase that is resonating around the place at the moment, this call to a kingdom adventure. And, and this idea that, that taking up this whole thing of worship that we drew from from 30 or 40 years ago, this understanding of, of, of the kingdom in terms of uh, works of righteousness and the prophetic and prayer, uh, understanding that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and forceful people are taking hold of it and now this kingdom adventure where we can live in the excitement of knowing that God's kingdom is here now. I just think that's really important. So I've chosen to speak on this little verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and it simply says this, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I just want to say four things about this verse. Firstly, seek first the kingdom means that you must be able to find it. You must be able to find it. The, the consistent message of the whole of Scripture of Jesus and particularly the Sermon on the Mount is you can find it. Just a few verses later, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and ye will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. You can 
find the kingdom. We have a problem because um, Matthew calls it the kingdom of heaven and we tend to think of heaven as the place we go to when we die, whereas Jesus didn't mean that at all. Jesus meant the inbreaking rule of God now. And we can find that if we seek it. It's not a place we go to where we die, but a, a sphere of influence that God has now. It's not a country, it's a rule. It's the rule of God, the place of the rule of God Almighty and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, now, here, in this place, in my heart, in my street, in Colchester, in this area. The kingdom is where God rules. And it seems that that's extended in three ways in the scriptures. It, there's the three ways that we can point to the kingdom or extend the kingdom. And, and one is telling people. Telling people the good news about Jesus. Talking the good news. The second one is the, the miracles, doing the signs of the kingdom. Praying for people and seeing healing and seeing demons cast out and seeing uh, people set free. And then good news to the poor, justice and mercy and righteousness. Seek first the kingdom. Find a way to talk about Jesus. Find a way to pray for the miracles. Find a way to do justice and express good news to the poor. You can find the kingdom. On Tuesday, the kingdom of God, you can find the kingdom. Secondly, you can find the kingdom. Secondly, the kingdom of God brings you focus. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the righteousness of Jesus, the joy and the peace of Jesus. Uh, Paul talks about the kingdom as the righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God brings you focus. It focuses your vision, it focuses your energy, it focuses your interests, it focuses your prayer. If you seek first the kingdom, then there's a focus to your life. You needn't worry too much about other stuff because you're seeking first the kingdom. What are you chasing? The whole context of this passage is, is what, what are you running after? If you're seeking wealth and goods, you'll find you're always concerned about the stock market crash or a fraudster. If you're seeking the kingdom, you'll find like the birds of the air that, that you have a beautiful clothing somehow. You'll find that if you seek the kingdom that your heavenly father is able to provide so that you needn't worry about tomorrow. It brings you a focus. A single focus that means we don't have to worry about everything else. In fact, the promise is seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added to you as well. So thirdly, seeking the kingdom, and I love this, seeking the kingdom stops us becoming too religious. <laughs> seeking the kingdom stops us becoming too religious I, I'm not sure I'd noticed this before but, but it says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and at the beginning of the chapter Jesus has talked about our acts of righteousness and the acts of righteousness that Jesus talks about are prayer uh, uh, sorry st firstly giving secondly prayer thirdly fasting and those are our acts of righteousness. And Jesus says, if you want to seek the righteousness of God, if you're seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then the way you pray is different. The way you give is different. The way you fast is different. Prayer isn't to impress other people on the streets by being seen or being heard by them because what you're doing is not impressing God or impressing people but you're speaking to your heavenly father who sees what is done in secret and already knows what you need seeking the kingdom means that we'll pray but we'll we'll pray not to impress people but to be rewarded by our father in heaven seeking the kingdom means we will fast but we'll fast without a public show in order to, to add strength to our prayers so that our Father who sees what we do in secret will reward us. And with, as we seek this sort of righteousness, it will be seen by our Heavenly Father and it attracts rewards from heaven, the sort of righteousness that causes God to act on our behalf. So, 
Seeking the kingdom of God means that it's got to be able to be found. Seeking the kingdom of God means that it brings focus to our life. Seeking the kingdom of God means that we don't get too religious. And lastly, seeking the kingdom of God means that you'll be fruitful. All these things will be added to you. The kingdom is simply the rule of God. And, and I know, and I think you know, that the, the rule of God is opposed, isn't it? There's, there's a, an opposition to the rule of God. There's something in me that opposes the rule of God. Paul calls it my, my flesh, which is perhaps an unfortunate phrase because there's nothing really wrong with my body apart from the fact it's falling apart and getting old. But, there's, uh, but he talks about my sinful nature, the, the bit in me that doesn't do what God wants. And he talks, he's, he talks about the way that that opposes the rule of God. He talks about the world as opposing the rule of God. Now again, there's nothing wrong with the world. Well, there isn't because, because God made the world and he said it was very good. But there's something about the systems and the principles and the, the way that normal happens in the world that is against God's purposes. Where, where normal in our culture is very self-absorbed, whereas the, the kingdom looks for love and grace and forgiveness. Normal is pleasure-centered, whereas the kingdom of God calls us to a higher level of pleasure, the joy at the right hand of God. Normal is more for me, but the kingdom of God is a, a bias to the poor, an ethic of sharing. And so, and sorry, and the other thing that opposes, of course, the, the work of God is, the, is the, the spiritual being of the devil or Satan who opposes the rule of God and everywhere he can he brings division and rebellion and hurt. And so these three things oppose the kingdom of God, the world, my flesh and the devil. And Jesus tells it best in a story. He tells a story about a farmer going out to sow seeds and it falls on different sorts of ground. And he says, the birds of the air come and steal some of that seed. And, and that's like the devil snatching away the seed from our hearts and from our lives. He says that some seed uh, goes onto ground where it's, it, it just tries to put down roots, but the roots don't go down very far. And it says, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth are like the world stopping the seed taking root. And then he talks about some seed begins to grow, but thorns grow up about it and choke the new seed. And, and he says that the, the new shoots uh, get strangled by the trouble or persecution or difficulties that attack our, from our flesh and stop us from growing. But then he says that there's a seed that falls on good soil and it produces 30, 60 or 100 times what is sown. There's fruitfulness in the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. Some of us are looking for a life of adventure at the moment. Feeling that God has got more for us than this. Seek first the kingdom. And you can find it. You can find it. Seek first the kingdom and allow it to bring focus to your life. Seek it first. So yeah, we don't throw in our job, but we use our job to work for the kingdom. We don't overthrow our family. We're seeking to bring the kingdom of God into our family. We don't become a hermit and move away from society. We're wanting society to reflect the kingdom of God. Make it your focus. Seeking the kingdom stops us from becoming too religious. There's a life of adventure, not a life of spiritual bondage, religious bondage. Jesus brings his kingdom of freedom. And that's the way to be fruitful 30, 60, 100 times what God has put 
into us. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Can we stand together? And perhaps we can have the band back as well. And that'd be all right. Let's stand. Let's stand. Because I just feel that for some of us, may only be a handful of us, but we just want to say, Lord, we've become distracted. Lord, we've become religious in the way that we do things. Lord, we, we haven't really borne much fruit. Lord, we don't feel we've found your kingdom, but we're tonight saying we want to seek first your kingdom. We want to, to give ourselves to pursuing the rule and the reign of God in our lives, whatever the cost whatever it does to us we want to say yes to you and have a default of yes to your kingdom we want to seek your kingdom in in the spheres in which we live and work and say lord god we want your kingdom to come we want your kingdom to come by what we say by seeing the miracles by working for justice, by telling the good news, Lord, we want your kingdom to come. We want to seek that and give ourselves to that. And Lord, we want to see kingdom fruit in our lives. The kingdom fruit of lives changed, of people transformed, of, of folk coming to know Jesus. So Lord, we give ourselves to you again tonight and we say we want to seek your kingdom and your righteousness in order that we might reap the reward for our prayer, that we might reap the reward of 30, 60, 100 times what you've sown into our life as we invest it in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.